Good evening, all. Good evening, Ian. Good evening. Stephen, I'm biased already. I'm going to apologise to everybody, but I'm, I can't wear a tie at the moment because I have shingles. Oh, you've got shingles? Yeah. Oh, no, that's rotten. I've had that. No one wants to know the detail, do they? But it's it's uncomfortable, to say the yeah. least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's bloody dreadful. <laughs> so presumably so, you've got it round your neck? Yeah, it's, it's round here, the back. So it goes to the front side. Yeah, it's, it's grim. Mm. But Does that, that mean you're run down, Ian? No, it just means like I need to man up. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I had it when I was 16, and there's three reasons you can get it. One is you've had it, you have it in your system. Two is um, you you get you know stress, and the other one obviously is um, your immune system is kind of down there somewhere. Um, and I think it's either which has a temporary permission, and then you have the surgery to the to the back of the side, and they're just labelled up there for people to see. This is the existing village hall from, um, I think it's 1927, it says on the slide there. You can see rendered building. Um, again, the rendered uh, shop further down the site. And you can see that the site, site slopes down from Wakeley Road down to Kings Lane at the, at the back. This is um, a, a view looking back down towards the site. So you can, this is looking, um, this is Kings Lane that we're on here. This is Wakeley Road and it's looking back down towards the south. I think that's right. This is an area of op important open space that we went past and saw. You can see the existing hall and you can see the difference in height. So the proposed building, I'll, I'll come to the cross section, but the proposed building will be slightly higher than than the existing hall and would come down um, extend to just beyond this hedgerow here and I'll show on a, on a slide later on. It's just looking through all these trees are outside of the site boundary and uh, to be retained which helps to provide some screening of the building. This is looking um, back across and the open space and you can see some of the different types of properties around different ridge heights and the levels changes as well. And also again the materials tending to be a, a slate roof predominantly. You can see the doctor's surgery, this is to be demolished and this is where the park, car parking area would predominantly go, although there would be some off Wakeley Road as well. Again, this is the existing entrance to the doctor's surgery. It was just a shot um, from uh, I think the officer's car looking back down towards King, the bottom of King's Lane. This is the footpath that runs um, adjacent to the surgery and the shop. So the shop is off to the left hand side and you can see the open space is on the right hand side. This is to, to be retained as part of the development. So I think this plan show, shows it better. So you can see that you've got the existing, where the existing um, village hall is now, the building will be set slightly further back and then join all the buildings together so that you've got the community hall adjacent to the important open space. You've then got the uh, surgery and consulting rooms and then the, the shop and cafe um, on, on the opposite side. This just shows the, the roof plan. Shows some of the um, materials. Now, there was a lot of debate, I think, last time about the materials and the, and the design and, and the context of that. And obviously, members have now been able to go out and have a look at what, what's around there. Um, stone is obviously um, appropriate to the area. There was some concern about the um, roofing material. And there was a sample on site, uh, a, attached which members were able to see on site and obviously then there's the um the large boarding as well that's that's proposed around the around the building this showing the east and west elevations so this is the the site that um at the at the top you've got the elevation that would be facing on to wakeley road and then um to the bottom you've got the elevation that faces onto King's Lane and you can see that it steps down 
Um, and then there's a landscaped area that's proposed, which if I go back up to these plans, you can see the car park, then a small la landscaped area. And then this is the area that's stepped up here. And you can see car parking to the front of the site as well. This plan is quite useful to show you the, the height differences and, and comparisons. So the red line here is the uh, village hall. And the lower one here, if you can just see where I'm pointing, is the shop. And then you've got the surgery here with the properties behind. And this, this you can just make out the a dwelling to the back. So you can see that the proposal is, like I say, about 0 0.8 metres higher than the existing um, village hall. Obviously, the building's a lot bigger. And because all the all three buildings have been joined into into one structure to bring everything together, and so it would be um, significantly higher than the existing shop. And uh, I think I measured that off to be approximately about three and a half meters. And I think members, when we were out on site, we were having quite a good look um, from across the open space and um, slightly further around from where this view is. But you can see the. The, this would be, so the shop, existing shops here, if I go back to some of these photographs just to show members. So here you can see the shop as it is at the moment. Bear in mind that the proposed structure is now going to be roughly at the, the height that I'm showing now. And similar viewpoint, artist impression, if you will, you can see here. This is the elevation at the bottom is from the west. So that's the, the uh, Kings Lane approach. And then you've got the um, approach from uh, the Wakeley Road with the car, some car parking uh, at, at the front. Uh, these were some um, photographs showing some of the, you know, potential materials that, that, that they've tried to to pick up on um, and obviously we did have a good look around and walk around the site so so that members could have a have a look at exactly what was in the area um, so the design it's a uh, i've described it as a semi-contemporary design um, uh, with what officers considered to be appropriate materials there's a, a mix of materials in there the stone picks up on um, the um, predominant local material the zinc, although um, not traditionally used in the area, it picks up on the colouring of um, other roofing materials, the slate, et cetera, that's used in there. Um, and then the, the timber cladding, uh, although not used on properties in the area, um, is still a traditional material and, and sympathetic to the area. The um, uh, conservation officers raised no objections to, to the proposal, and, and we believe that it, it will um, enhance the area by removing some uh, old tied buildings that don't particularly enhance the character or appearance of the area. Um, no significant impact on residential amenity. Um, there has been some concerns um, about noise, but bearing in mind that all these uses are on site at the moment, um, so it's not like we're introducing new uses. There are restrictions proposed in the conditions about the delivery hours. Um, and the other issue, um, there was con uh, there's removal of permitted development rights, so the shop can only be used for retail and for no other purpose. There's also a condition with regards to parking, which was debated in some length, I think, last, at last time's meeting as well. Um, following discussions with the highways officer, what we have agreed now is the existing building on site can be used for, um, uh, the hall can be used for events up to hold approximately 120 people. And there's no parking restrictions on that at the moment. What we are suggesting, because um, the hall is slightly larger, and whilst the applicants have indicated that it's not their intention to have bigger events, but more just more spacious ones, uh, notwithstanding that, we do think it's necessary to have some control over that. So we have suggested at condition 10 that there's a restriction that says where the events are going to be more than 100 people in the hall, that the shop and surgery should be closed, or that there should be details of additional parking um, and a parking management plan should be submitted to us. 
So that might be enable the use of um, a, a field elsewhere in the village or um, possibly pub car park, whatever, but there need to be some management details submitted um, in order to control that. And the highway authority are happy with that approach. Um, we think the building sits comfortably within, within its setting and, and the applicants uh, have tried to address the, the significant change in levels that, that's across the site. Um, sustainable development, it, it's meeting um, a, a local demand. Um, we consider as officers the design and materials to be appropriate. You'll see from the report that there other um, people have taken different views on that in terms of local residents. Um, and ultimately that will be for members to decide and you've all been to have a look and, and see for yourself. So the application is recommended for approval subject to the conditions set out in the report. Thank you, Jim. Justin, thank you. Um, and again, thank you to the two officers for allowing um, members to visit the site. That's uh, that, that was really important. Um, I'm going to go now to open debate and I note that um, the Ward members um, are not able to speak tonight, um, but I can see one raised hand. I'm going to go straight to Councillor Woodley, please. Um, hi, Justin. Um, I was looking at the plan again um, in detail. Um, and can you just clarify a few points? I presume in the new plan, the, the surgery is at the front of the building um, from Wakeley Road. Is that correct? And to the to the right hand side, if I was facing it. Yeah, I'll just share my screen again. Yeah, do you mind? Sorry, because I'm slightly concerned about um, so, if if that yeah. So that the where your um, so, so so this is this is the surgery, and here yeah. you've got the community hall at, at the yeah. back of that, and then this is the shop and cafe area. Okay, that's good. So um, my assumption is right. Um, I'm slightly confused or concerned about the um, this fire exit arrangements for that surgery, bearing in mind that most surgeries at attract um, able and disabled people. Um, have we looked at that? It just seems like there's a, a very small fire exit on the opposite side of the main entrance that's inside one of the consulting rooms as I look at this plan. Um, I just wondered, had that been considered before I raised my second point on disabled access? I, I've i had no concerns raised by it. Um, I'd also say that the um, application will have to go through building regs as well, and, and that will ensure that all of the disabled access, etc., meets with current standards. So um, from a planning point of view, I've got no reason uh, or no concerns raised on it. Um, and in order for the building uh, to, to be opened, it will need to comply with building regs. So um, my understanding is that it has been taken into account. They do have a level threshold at, at the front of the building in order to accommodate that. Yeah, I, I can see that. As I say, it's just this, it's um, the exit that I'm slightly concerned at because all the other um, entrances into and exits in this are double doors other than that particular um, section. So that's why I was slightly concerned. And I understand that building regula regulations get to look at it after we've started construction, but um, it might be. No, no they, they, they have to be signed off um, before. Oh, okay, that's brilliant. So I don't, Concern, concern. We they do checks whilst it, they look at the plans um, at the start of the process, and then they'll do checks to make sure that the building is being built in accordance with the agreed plans. Okay, well then I'll I'll take take that as an assurance. Uh, the other thing about uh, disabled access is actually about the disabled parking. Again, in relation to the surgery, there only seems to be one place um, marked for disabled parking. Um, for the surgery users, because if you look at where the other disabled parking is, it's not exactly accessible. Um, it, it, I presume that meets the requirements, does it? 
I, I'm, I'm led to believe so. I've had no no concerns raised for, from from our our highways um, team in terms of um, the parking and disabled parking space arrangement. Um, I'm just looking to see whether I've got the another plan. I don't know whether this plan shows them all. Yeah, it shows three. Oh, you see, so one at the front. yeah. So, so there, there there are two two at the back of the site, and there there are uh, is what one at the front as well. Yeah, but to get access to surgery, you if you, you would have you back. would have to, you would go through the the front of the site. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Which means the ones at the back are almost. Um, cut themselves off from being accessible because of the distance you would have to travel along the path to the front of the building and then back up. So it's just a, an observation. It seems it doesn't exactly scream. I mean, there would be, friendly. I don't think there would be any issue. If necessary, it, it, it would be possible to switch those spaces around it, 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 if it was felt that it was better with, without any implication on, on the planning side of things. Um, there's plenty of space to put the disabled car parking spaces at, at the front if that, that was desired. But I, um, I think that there is, like I say, there, there's space at the front and there is, I think they've put two at the back because that is the larger parking area. And there's still a, albeit it, it is a, a further distance to travel, but there's still a ramped access that would be uh, give you access from those rear car parkings to the front if you needed to use them but it would it would um the entrance does that's um three quarters along the length of the building doesn't give you access to the surgery so you have to go to the front of the surgery to get access. Uh, yeah yeah yes yeah but there is still a level threshold so, that enables you yeah, to get all okay. the way around if you want. It, it just doesn't seem as um I don't know. My initial impression is it doesn't seem as disabled friendly as one would have hoped for a, a surgery. Um, but hey, ho, maybe that's just me. Um, but thank you anyway. Councillor Woody, thank you. And I'm looking now um, to Councillor Oxley, please. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I think it was very helpful for us to go and have a look at the site uh, and uh, meet with the developer. Um, we're able to get a much clearer idea in our heads of uh, exactly where it is in relation to the rest of the, the village. Um, I have a, a couple of questions with regards to uh, loading. So the shop, I'm looking at the, the plan and we have the shop, which is gonna be in the left-hand side. So, and there's a loading bay, which is right by, um, is that a door? So presumably the loading will be straight into um the front of the building through the door um which is right adjacent to the loading bay is that correct um there, there is access there to, to go through that and i believe that that would be the the intention for for most things um however i, I suppose if there was a need for for whatever reason there's always the main entrance that can can access um, any part of the building but I believe that's why that door has been put there. Okay that's, that's one question and uh, my next question is um, with regards to a smoking shelter because I know that um, uh, as it is a, a community hall um, I, don't, I guess at the moment people just go outside when they want to have a cigarette but uh, are, there, are there any is there any plans within the plans for a, smel a smoking shelter? I've not seen any plans for a, a smoking shelter. Um, there's obviously the, the garden area, like you say, but I've not seen any plans for a, a shelter to be proposed as part of this development. And the only reason I ask that is because I know that uh, there are concerns from neighbouring properties and um, quite a lot of uh, noise can come from people who are outside having a cigarette. Um, so it might, as I say, it might, Again, it's if it's not on the if it's not on the uh, application, then. Uh, but I, I I thought that might have been some sort of provision for smokers within the application, in order to, and then it could be perhaps be placed somewhere which it would minimise the impact to neighbouring properties. That's just uh, that's just my idea, and I'm still not happy about the uh, materials that are going to be used. I'll wait to hear what everybody else has to say. I think is it. I still can't get my head around zinc cladding. 
So um, a zinc roof. But I'll, as I say, I'll wait to hear what everybody else has to say. Thank you. Councillor, thank you. And I've got a hand from uh, Councillor Baines, please. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Chairman. Um, there is no doubt that the there is support in the village, widespread support, for the principle of um, this development and in, indeed from the parish council. Um, there's also no doubt that the three buildings it would replace are undistinguished. Um, if I could, Chairman, turn to the parish council's submission. Um, in over 20 years on this committee or involved with it, parish councils always complain that their views are not listened to by the local planning authority. And often these views are very sincerely held, but they're not material planning considerations. This one is very different, Chairman. Um, I don't think I've ever seen such a detailed um, submission um, supported by evidence relating um, two material planning considerations. Um, it's detailed, unemotional, and it refers directly to the recently adopted neighbourhood plan. Now, this neighbourhood plan, I'm saying what I'm sure people are very well aware of, specifically intended to allow local communities um, to influence development in their area. Um, so if I could, Chairman, turn to that submission. Um, they say throughout the document, I'm, I'm referring now to page 13 of the report and it's, uh, it's paragraph 15. Um, they say that there is no clear evidence the design being consistent with the neighborhood plan. This is the first point they make. Um, they then go on to detail things, the landscape, um, uh, that this, this is um, not um, about scale and um, design and the style of these buildings, not, not appropriate. Um, they go on further um, to talk about um, the lack of traditional materials. Um, Council Ops has already uh, referred to one aspect of that. Um, and they do say that for both aesthetic reasons and lack of uh, compliance with the neighbourhood plan. These are not appropriate. Um, they go on to say that, um, that um, there's, when you're talking about the roofing, um, most councillors felt that this was stretching a point to say that they were found on churches um, uh, and so on, and it should be viewed as a contemporary um, uh, material. Um, similarly, over the wood cladding, um, they go on further um, to say that any alterations um, by condition would not give people the opportunity to be properly consulted. And in all, Chairman, in that report, I found nine specific areas where the neighbourhood plan is breached. Um, or I say I found um, the submission. Um, found that. Um, now, if you follow that on and think that um, we, um, as a planning authority and as a council, um, have replied to the consultation on the proposed alterations to um, national planning, um, among other things, saying that it takes away local um, uh, uh, ability uh, to influence things, we, we need to be consistent. Um, the conservation officer comments um, on um, para um, 38 on that uh, little bit of the report, and he comments on cost. I did say last time, Chairman, that the cost should not be um, a material, I don't think is a material planning consideration. It's, um, um, and equally, um, when a uh, little bit later, paragraph 42, um, that the um, uh, architects would be reluctant to revisit it. Um, well, that is completely um, ir irrelevant, I'm afraid. Overall, um, 
I would say that um, if you look on page 23, um, I'll get there in a second, um, that um, when the conclusion is, um, it, it, it is, um, complies with statutory tests, there is, that is an opinion, it is not really supported by anything, it's an assertion, uh, unlike the Parish Council submissions, where every point they make is supported by evidence. So my feeling at the moment is that the scale, the design, and the choice of materials, um, the whole thing is overwhelming. It's inappropriate um, for the location. It's the most important building to be erected in Barrowden for several hundred years. The church reflected the values and aspirations of previous residents of Barrowden and is a fitting reflection of them. I don't think that the same could be said of this proposal. I think the intention is honourable and it deserves a far better outcome than the, out, uh, than the outcome that we've got in the proposal before us. As it sounds, Chairman, I will listen to what other members say, of course, but I could not support this. It is going to dominate that part of the village, dominate the whole village possibly, for the next century or more. And we need to have something, yes, that is of outstanding design, is made appropriate materials. And that I think would be a true reflection of what Barrowden wants. I don't think this proposal is. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Councillor, before I go back to offices, I mean, I, I think I'm drawn to my past of, um, we are but temporary custodians. Um, so I think um, there is there's merit in everything that everybody has said this evening, um, and it's what we need to consider. But um, you did mention something there which I thought was really important. Um, a number of breaches I think you referred to. So I think it would be right and proper um, to go back to officers before I go to Councillor Beggy um, for opinions both from um, Stephen and from Justin, please, on those breaches. Chairman, if, if I could come in. Um, I think in term, terms of the neighbourhood plan, um, it, it's it's a difference of opinion in, in terms of <laughs> and different interpretation of, of the of the plan, um, and, and 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 members will have to, to to make their own judgment on on which way they fall on this. Um, in terms of an example would be um, policy. I think it's BW six, which is the design principle calls for Baradin, and there's been a lot of concern about the 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 modern design approach with this one. Um, and saying that it's contrary to to the the neighbourhood plan, but the neighbourhood plan does have a, a, a point five, so it does list a, a lot of things. But point five does state modern, innovative design using contemporary materials will be supported where it can be demonstrated that the development will be of the highest quality and can be successfully integrated into the existing context. Now, as officers, we believe that that test has been met and that it can be achieved. Um, clearly, that that's that's a judgment. That's a professional judgment that officers have put forward as a recommendation, um, and it, it's one of those things that members will have to weigh in the balance when when coming to a judgment tonight. No, thank you. And before I go to Councillor Beggy, Stephen, did you want to add anything to that in um, regard to the dimension of breaches? No, I agree with what's just been said. That it, it is really a matter for members to reach their own judgment. It may well be that that judgment goes against the wording of the plan or neighbourhood plan or local plan. But it's a matter for the officer's judgment in the report and for members' judgment in deciding the application. That's kind, thank you. Um, if I can go to Councillor Beggy next, please. Uh, no, sorry, Chair, I have my hand up because I wanted to hear the um, Justin's opinion on the, on the various breaches. I think it was bad to hear both sides because Edward speaks very, very well and is a very good orator but I wanted to hear both sides of the, the argument. So thank you. Um, I'm looking around the room now to see whether I have other raised hands. I think I can see Councillor Oxley, please. Yeah, following on from that, um, I totally agree with everything 
uh, Councillor Baines just said, um, given the fact that the village hall was erected in 1927 um, and it's still there nearly a hundred years afterwards and it was put up specifically to serve a purpose for the village and uh, the elements, the other elements have been bolted on the hall and the doctor's surgery. I think everybody agrees, well everybody that I've spoken to agrees that it is a very important uh, to have uh, to spend some money on this development in order to ensure that the people of Barrowden have got uh, a shop at Village Hall and uh, doctor surgery fit for purpose for the next 100 years. So, and it's, it's up to us this evening to decide if we're going to go with this design or um, ask them to come back with something which is more appropriate to the setting. And uh, when I went there, I still, I, I really struggled to, to see how it was going to sit um, in that uh, it is a very nice, it's a beautiful part of the village surrounded by open trees and green fields. And the houses looking round, there was a mixture. And uh, I, 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 as I say, I am struggling to support this. Um, despite all that's been said, um, I still think that it, it, the design really doesn't come up to, it won't match the, uh, it'll be, it'll quickly be dated and, it, and it'll stick out like a, like a sore thumb. That's just my opinion. Uh, Councillor Oxley, thank you, and, and I'm drawn to comment very briefly um, that um, the village is is um, is a growth area, as all villages are, um, and I just hope in the deliberations we make tonight that we think about the future of of everybody in the village, and as people have spoken about so passionately, um, how that village is perceived by residents and also um, by those that visit it and look for amenities that will last for a, a good length of time. I'm going to cross now to uh, Councillor Cross and then Councillor McCartney, please. Uh, Mr Chairman, thank you very much for coming across to cross. Um, thought I'd just get that one in there. No, seriously, I, I, as Mark did and Edward did when we visited the site, I, I do have great reservations on what I would term the erection of an agricultural building of that size in the middle of the village. I know some of the houses adjacent to it, you know, were, were not of an age. However, I think we must be very, very mindful of the wishes of the parish council who represent all of the villagers. And in discussions with the architects on the site, I, I did actually show my slight displeasure Furthermore, I went onto their website and looked at some of the other buildings that had been erected in other villages. And unfortunately, I was not too impressed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councillor, thank you. Uh, Councillor McCartney, please. I'm off mute. Yeah, I'm off mute. Uh, the growth of Baradon was one thing that, that I've been really thinking about, actually, because when I first looked at that, it did strike me as being quite substantially bigger than what was there already. And I did wonder whether quite all that seating area was needed inside, uh, in the cafe, in the foyer, and so on, the village hall as an element. I, I take the point that, you know, that they are accommodating 120 people at the moment. Uh, was it 160? I forget now from the report. Anyway, uh, more than is, more than is pro proposed in this one. So. Um, 100 people in a village hall is is a in a in a normal world a decent wedding, isn't it? Um, it did strike me that that building was going to look dated before very long. Uh, does that take it out of being in keeping with the area? I don't know. The building that's there at the moment. I take your point that it's been there nearly a hundred years, Mark, but. Uh, it's looking pretty tired at the moment that the existing building it is you know it's looking tired and dated um i think i'm probably minded not to support this just because of the materials that are used i think it, I, I like the project i like the the vision for the future of baradon i think a nice big 
community hub would be wonderful. I think it's just what the people need. I just think it needs to be a little bit more sympathetic to what's there already. And that's, that's where I'm standing at the moment. That's for Carly, thank you. And Councillor Ainsley, please. Thank you. Um, I listened to the debate with interest. I particularly liked Councillor Baines's comments. I do, having done a site visit and been there, I do feel that actually the scale design and choice of materials doesn't seem appropriate at all. And um, I do support the general concept and I would encourage them to come back with a design that is more in keeping with the village. So um, I think at the moment, moment I'm minded um, not to support this application. Thank you. Councillor, thank you. Before I go to Councillor Oxley again, um, I think my final sort of comment is that um, in um, supporting the Parish Council in their views and also recognising that the residents um, need a sustainable future, um, I think most people will be familiar with placed-based um, and it is absolutely critical that we maintain facilities for um, populations of this type going forward. But I'm going to go to Councillor Oxley next and then Councillor Woodley, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to make a point about the uh, the architects. They, are, they actually have won awards. That I don't think we should denigrate that they are. They are a, a successful firm who have won awards uh, around the country. And uh, so I, I, I wouldn't want to con condone any sort of uh, denigration of them and their work. They, they and they're very they were when we met them on the day, they were very uh, enthusiastic and they uh, uh, were champions of, of that particular design. I think everybody appreciates the fact that it, it the, and this is the point I made about the, the building uh, being put up in 1927, the village hall, um, it does need replacing. It's, and it stood there for all that time. And this is the point I'm making. So we wanna be thinking about a building that in a hundred years time is still gonna be admired by the people who uh, will be using it for functions in, in the village. Uh, and to bring all three together is an excellent initiative. The, the Barrowden shop is uh, is really uh, it was a it, an exemplar when it was first put together, and we mustn't lose sight of that again. And we must do all we can to support them. However, I I really don't I can't see this design is going to actually achieve what they are hoping to achieve. Um, and I, I I haven't heard anything to uh, contradict that. Um, I won't make a proposal. I'll wait to hear what uh, Nick has got to say. No, Councillor, and, and I would, before I go to Councillor Woodley, of course, um, we can still vote against or for this. Um, so there may not need to be um, another proposal put forward. Um, we simply have a proposal put in front of us. Um, Councillor Woodley, thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, I just wondered if the officer could just um, flash back up some photos of the surrounding buildings um, for me, just to remind me of um, what what buildings around it are, because I'm I'm less um, less minded for refusal on the look and feel, but you know, um, and I live in a house that uh, was was erected in 1927, so uh, I appreciate the old, but I don't feel that it's as out of keeping with the surrounding buildings that we saw briefly in the photos earlier. Uh, um, this so, is the existing village hall. Yeah, no, it's more about the surrounding buildings. Uh, uh, just so if you've got anything. It, it's difficult on on here. Um, just bear with me a second, because I, what I can do is probably pull up a, a Google Earth street view. Thank you. Might help. Um, just bear with me, I'll have to stop my share and share again. Can you see now, has that got my Google Earth on? It certainly has. It does. There we go. So this is when the shop was being doing, so you can tell this was a long time ago. And um, so this is some of the, the properties you see bungalow. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's what I remembered, because I, I find that that particular um, building opposite 
it is actually quite a modern look on certainly on the brick i understand the the roof and that you know we've discussed the zinc roof before now but the actual um uh, modern brickwork and you know is it's not as out of kilter with the rest as as I, I think that, that it was fair to say that there, there was a mix and I, um, I think that the applicants had tried to pick up on the stone that was around there mm. and uh, like I said with the, the zinc um, it's not to say that that's a traditional material but it's trying to pick up on the palette of, of the, the roof slopes that in and around the area which you can see are all of a, you know, mm. a, a there's a lot of the, the dark grey which it would be in, in, in keeping with and um, certainly from from the majority of the di distant views um, and it is a material that's been used on you know churches etc uh, where lead has been um, uh, stolen unfortunately so that, that there is a mix around there and a mix of new and old properties and there's also the varying ridge heights as well which take into account um, we can't see from this position but we walked around the site and I pointed out on the other side of the site where the, the ridge heights were all stepping down and there was a difference yeah. there. So, um, okay, thank you. That, that, that's brilliant. You've um, helped me form my opinion. Thank you. Councillor Woodley, thank you. Um, if you forgive me, Councillor Oxford, I'm going to go to Councillor Brown next and then back to you if that's okay. Councillor Brown. Thank you, Chairman. Um, there are various new developments in, in Barrowden um, using more modern materials as um, some of the stone that's used is very garish in my opinion and doesn't really fit in very well but I think this um, development does enhance the village and will obviously provide an excellent amenity for, for the whole village. I mean it, it does look quite agricultural but I mean a farmer could put an agricultural building up in that field next door if he wanted to. Um, and, I mean I I just think it, it, if it looks dated, well, it, well, so does a lot of the houses in um, in Barrowden. I mean, it's just a matter of opinion, that is, isn't it? I mean, the, the people in the 17th century built those houses, probably thought these are going to look dated in 50 years, and now everyone's thinking they're marvellous, you know? I mean, <laughs> how, when do you stop? It's, it's a really valid point and um, are not, not lost on all of us. I think that every town and village in the country has different levels of, uh, of architecture over the years. Um, and, it's a, and thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Oxley. No, so I'm looking around the room now and asking for any, I can't see any more raised hands. So I think I'm good to go for the vote now. Um, I, I don't plan to change the proposal. The proposal is as it is. Um, Kit, uh, could we go for a recorded vote, please? Chairman, we need a proposal and seconder first. Apologies, we do. Um, so can I have a proposer, please? Um, I'm looking at Councillor Baines and a seconder, Councillor McCartney. Thank you. Can, can, can we hear the proposal, please? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, so the proposal goes I, back. I, goes I'm back. proposing refusal, Chairman, um, on the grounds of scale, design and materials. Councillor, thank you. So you'd like to... You'd like that to be a, a counter proposal, so we, we forget the one previously and we take your proposal. I'm, I'm looking for a second, Chairman. Sure, let me just look across the room. I've got Councillor Oxley um, as a seconder, thank you. So, on that proposal, can you just remind us of, again, please, Councillor Baines, what that is? Um, yes, I would propose refusal on the grounds of inappropriate scale, design and use of materials. I, I recognise there are other uh, objections in the report, but that would be uh, my basis. Thank you. So that's an amendment to the original proposal. Um, Kit, if we could take a recorded vote, please. Okay, uh, Councillor Ainsley. Four. Uh, Councillor Baines. Four. Councillor Beggy. Uh, abstain. Uh, Councillor Andrew Brown. Against. Uh, Councillor Cross. For. Uh, Councillor McCartney. Against. Uh, Councillor Oxley. For. Uh, Councillor Rizal. Against. And Councillor Woodley. Against. 
we have a tie. Um, we have four in favour of the proposal from Councillor Baines and four against the proposal and one abstention. Uh, therefore, it would go to the chairman to sort of make the deciding vote on that one. Okay, I just need some advice from yourself and perhaps Stephen here. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm minded to vote against that proposal, but then go back to the original pro proposal. Are we permitted to do that or not? I would, um, you could, as far as I know, you could vote against and then we would just need another proposal. Another yeah, proposal. because I, as I understand it, the, uh, Councillor Baines has asked for an amendment to the original proposal, which if I vote against means that fails, that falls. And can we then go back to the original proposal? And then take a uh, vote on that. Uh, that sounds right. Chairman, to me. I don't think it was an original. Sorry, I'm. Chairman, I don't think it was an original proposal. It was a recommendation. A recommendation by the officer. I don't think there was an original proposal. Council Baines' proposal was to re refuse, which, if you vote against, will have failed. And you can then ask the proposal. Okay, so I'm going to vote against uh, the proposal. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, we, we, we couldn't hear more of that. Could you repeat that, please, Stephen? Uh, yes, I'll turn my video off. The proposal was to refuse the application. If you vote against, that proposal will fail. You can then seek another proposal from another member to approve or, or whatever, and then it can be on that. No, thank you. Uh, so on that basis, Kit, I'm going to vote against the proposal from Councillor Baines, and I'm then looking for another proposal. I, I voted against. Member. I voted against, which meant I was in favour of the pr proposal. And now you've voted against, so you are now in favour. So, th so it's, oh, it's passed, surely. Stephen? Well, I think we need to go through the... We need to go through the votes. As I, as I heard it, there were four against and four in favour, which I think was Kit's assessment as well. So what I'm trying to say... And you Council have a casting Brown, vote, Chair. So what I'm trying to say, Councillor Brown, is if the, I vote against the proposal from Councillor Baines, his proposal fails, it doesn't mean then that the... I don't believe, I, and I'm looking to Stephen to cl clarify this, it doesn't mean then that the proposal, that the, that the um, original proposal has been heard and voted on. So have we got to propose then that, that it's, it's, it's... That's, that's it's, my understanding from Stephen, it. yes. So why would it be any different? You, Stephen, can, you, can, you can propose that. Okay, if I can just call a halt to members, please. Stephen, can you just clarify for everybody, please? Yes. If, if can you turn your video off? Proposal. Sorry. By Councillor Baines to refuse. Can you hear me now? We can, that's yes. much better, thank if, you. Yes, thank you. If the proposal fails, then there's not been a decision on the application. It is then open to another member to make another proposal, which if seconded is voted upon, and then we can see where we get to at that stage. And Stephen, am I in a position to uh, make that proposal or does it need to be a member of the committee? Well, you have to vote on the on this proposal first. If you so, vote against it and we have no decision, you can then invite proposals from other members. Thank you. So I'm voting against um, the proposal from Councillor Baines. Kit, thank you. And I'm now looking for a, uh, I'm looking for a proposal from another member of the committee, please. Uh, Mr Chairman, I, I propose, propose that we now vote upon the recommendation of our officers. Councillor Cross, thank you. That's exactly what I was looking for. Kit, if we could go to the vote, please. Thank you very much. Uh, can I just confirm who seconded that? Sorry. Uh, that's Councillor Woodley. Thank you. Thanks. OK, uh, Councillor Ainsley. Against. Councillor Baines. Against. Councillor Beggy. Abstain. <laughs> uh, Councillor Andrew Brown. Favour. Councillor Cross. Against. Councillor McCartney. 
I came tonight ready to vote in favour of this. The debate turned me very slightly against, and then the debate brought me very slightly back in favour again. So I am probably on balance 51% in favour of this. So four. Councillor Oxley. Against. Uh, Councillor Rizal. In favour. And Councillor Woodley. Four. And yeah, that's a, a tie again. So um, Councillor Rizal, you have the deciding vote as chairman. Yeah, thank you. Um, I've listened to the debate tonight and I'm not going to bang on, which I know that councillors will be happy about. Um, in making my decision, um, it is about listening to um, the work that's been done or watching the work that's been done uh, by the parish council. Um, and I would implore them, implore that they um, look to the future with a very, very keen eye. And, 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 and I mean that about the budget that an extraordinary build might take. So I'm going to vote against it. I'm going to vote against it, but would ask that the Paris Council look to come back very quickly with something that is sustainable for the future. Sorry, Chairman, so you're voting against the proposal to go with officer recommendations? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, then we'll... Right, one sec. Then we'll need a proposal to sort of give reasons as to um, basically we're back to the first vote again where we need a proposal on reasonings for voting against the application if that is what they wish, I believe. Stephen, is that right? There, there has not yet been a vote on the a successful vote on this. <laughs> so you will have to go back, I think, not been in the situation before. But I think you'll have to invite members to another proposal, presumably to refuse the application with reasons, which will then be voted on. If that vote succeeds, it will be refused. And if it doesn't succeed, then we'll still have no decision, I'm afraid. Thank you. I'm looking for a proposal then, please, from the committee. I propose that we I've got my hand up on something else. <laughs> Councillor Cross, you, you have a proposal. And I would like to use the same reasons that Councillor Baines used in the original one, please. Thank you. And a second, please. Mr Chairman, I have my hand up on another point. My apologies, but, Councillor uh, Brown, thank you. I, I, I just wondered, Mr Chairman, you, you voted one way to start with and then another way only 30 seconds later. How? What, I, I wondered what changed your mind. OK, well, that's a really it's a, it's a reasonable question. Um, so my my thoughts at the end were to understand um, what is very clear from the uh, the parish council. Um, but my point was um, that uh, the the proposal as it stands at the moment um, clearly um, doesn't meet the needs of the parish council. There is, however, there is, however, a need from the from the village to have those facilities. I worry um, that the facilities that they've got at the moment will eventually fall over. At the point they fall over, there won't be a replacement. Um, but it strikes me at the moment the parish council are not supporting this. So that that's my that's my reason for being where I am now. Councillor Beggy. Um, I'd like to just take some advice, maybe from Stephen or or Justin. Um, I hear, I hear what you've done, Chair, and that's, that's perfectly your, your, your prerogative. Um, I, I fell slightly down on not voting an abstention because I could not make the site visit due to, to, to work. Um, what was mentioned there was about a facility and a need for the village to have that facility. How much weight should I be placing on that? Because that may actually tip the balance between myself not being able to make the site visit but knowing the village against actually um, the requirement for and I believe the risk of the, the project not happening. Is that to um, two officers Nick, Nick is it? Uh, I, yeah two officers please sorry. I mean, Justin. The, 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 the needs of the, the village um, and, and the, the, the wider public benefit that the proposal um, would create is a material planning consideration uh, and ultimately the, the weight that you give give to that is one one that you will need to, to decide upon yourself 
but it is certainly a material planning consideration that you are quite within your rights to, to place a, a weight on. Thank you. So, so my fear that they may lose this project is a material planning condition. Thank you. Um, I'm going to move, move next to Councillor Baines and then Councillor Oxley, please. Um, thank you very much indeed, Joan. Um, I absolutely take the point about public benefit. And um, when I first spoke, um, there is no doubt that Baradon requires some improved facility. Um, but uh, it's a matter, again, and other members have already said this, um, something of this scale in this um, is perhaps not the appropriate, well, I, as you know, I think is not the appropriate um, uh, solution. Um, if I could go back to the conservation officer's report, Chairman, and he actually says, um, trying to um, justify the um, requirement to enhance the conservation area, he says, I mean, I use the term undistinguished of the three buildings. He said um, knocking them down uh, would actually enhance the conservation area. Uh, I, I entirely agree with him. Um, what it does not specifically do is support the replacement. It, it is a negative. And I feel that two wrongs um, don't make a right. Yes, they, they are buildings that either have um, outlived their um, original beauty, if they possessed any, um, or were pretty, um, um, as I say, undistinguished in the first place. But the fact that their removal would enhance the area doesn't mean that there is actual support that this design this particular design would enhance the area. And, and that is, uh, is the reason for me voting as I have done. Thank you, Chairman. Answer, thank you. And I think it's important to note tonight that actually when we are accused of predetermining um, these things uh, before we get to committee, it is fundamentally clear tonight that that is not the case. Um, that we're able to discuss openly and change our minds. And I absolutely applaud that, that's democracy. Councillor Beggy. I'm sorry, I took my hand off instead of unmuting. Um, uh, I, I hear what um, Councillor Bain says very eloquently, but again, I'm now having to weigh up the public benefit and the potential of not that happening. I am ward member of the of the Northern Territories of, of Greetham, and those that know Greetham know that the community centre and the community hub there is of no um, architectural significance, but is actually the centre and the thriving hub of that village and I am very concerned that by not um, approving this application that opportunity may well be lost the opportunity for that village which could be enormous is is thrown away. Answer, thank you and and I suppose my final comment before we perhaps go to a proposal um, is that there is a there is a responsibility to think about how a building fits in a village but there is also a far bigger responsibility to think about the services and products that come out of that building for the future of that village. Um, I'm looking for a proposer, please, so that we can take this to another vote. Um, looking around the room, Councillor Beggy, would you be happy to make a proposal? Um, I, I, I propose, for the reasons that I've said, that we propose that the A officer's recommendations are accepted. And a seconder, please. Councillor Brown, okay, if we can move to recorded vote, please. No problem. Uh, Councillor Ainsley. Against. Councillor Baines. I, I was trying to raise a point of order, Chairman. I thought we were debating Councillor Cross's proposal on which we haven't actually voted. Am I correct? Is that right? I think it was the same proposal that you'd raised, Councillor Bain, as we've already uh, voted against that. Is that right? I thought, sorry, Chairman, I thought you accepted Councillor Cross's proposal and it was seconded. But uh, I looked to the legal officer. That, that was my concern. No, sure, I do understand. My belief is that the, the vote that um, you put forward was proposed, seconded, voted on, that was voted against. Councillor Cross then asked for the same vote to be taken again. But we'll go back to yep. the, the legal officer for guidance. 
Well, I stand to be correct. I don't recall that Councillor Crotty's proposal was seconded. Uh, just to chip in, I agree with that as well. It wasn't. Um, so can we carry on with the recorded vote, please? Um, no Sorry, problems. Chairman. Uh, so we've got hints from Ainsley. Uh, Councillor Baines. Um, against. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Beggy. Or. Councillor Brown. Or. Councillor Cross. Against. Uh, Councillor McCartney. Or. Councillor Oxley. Against. Uh, Councillor Rizal. Or. And Councillor Woodley. Or. That is five in favour and four against, Chairman. Okay, thank you very much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, if we can move on to uh, the next item on the agenda. Just bear with me, with technology. And it is proposal 2020-1205 full proposed additional, uh, proposed addition of three new roof windows and a, new, a new, and a new floor within the vaulted lounge to form a study area. If I could go to the planning officer for a presentation, please. Chairman, yeah, can you hear me? We can, thank you. Uh, the application's before members because um, it, it, the applicant is the father of um, one of our planning officers. Um, so in the interest of transparency and in line with the uh, constitution, it's before committee. Um, this is the application site and the property, which you can see, which is a, a, a bungalow uh, with, it does have room in the roof space, so it is two storey, but um, within the roof space. And what is proposed is uh, the external alterations are to put in two windows on the rear, two Velux windows on the rear elevation, roof lights, and one on the front. And effectively, they have a vaulted uh, lounge at the moment, and they want to put in a ceiling in that to create uh, a room above. Um, there was concern about potential overlooking of rear gardens, and so the two uh, roof lights on the rear elevation have been raised so that they would be a, a minimum of 1.7 metres above floor level, so they're high-level roof lights. Uh, the one at the front is at a lower level for fire escape purposes, but it overlooks a driveway and the separation distances are greater than the rear. So uh, this is the property. This is where the Velux window would go or roof window on the, the front of the property. And this is what it, it faces out towards um, driveway. And you can see that there, there is a, a property garden, but the distance between this fence and the proposed window is approximately 10 metres, um, which is what we'd look for um, as, as a minimum if it was um, a, a, a normal window effect. Then on the rear elevation, the two windows would again go at high level in, in this roof space um, and uh, overlook the, the rear garden. And this you can see is looking out to the properties to, to the rear. Uh, and as I've said, those two windows on the rear elevation would be at high level to avoid any loss of privacy or overlooking of those neighbours' gardens. Uh, he, like I say, the, the external alterations are minimal. It's, it's just uh, three windows. Um, so it complies with national policy in terms of design, um, in terms of space standards and promoting good design from our, uh, our adopted core policies, um, CS19 and SP15. And therefore, Chairman, it is recommended for approval. Thank you. Justin, thank you. I'm looking for the ward member. Do we have the ward member with us to speak first? No, I don't believe so. Chairman, so, for clarification, I believe it's, is it Councillor Woodley and yourself? Yeah, I'm not going to speak on this one, but Councillor Woodley, would you like to? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I have absolutely no problem with it at all. So I don't have a lot of eloquence to put other than I'm in full support. Thank you. I'm looking for hands around the room from the committee. Councillor Oxley, firstly, please. I would second that. And uh, Councillor Brown, I see a hand raised, please. Yeah, I'm, I mean, the, the only 
issue about the overlooking has been addressed that I can't see any issue with this at all. So uh, can I propose that we go with the officer's recommendation? Thank you. Um, so I've got the proposer from uh, Councillor Brown, seconded by Councillor Woodley. Uh, no other hands in the room. Can we go to a recorded vote, please, Kit? No problem. Uh, Councillor Ainsley? In favour. Uh, Councillor Baines? Or uh, Councillor Beggy? Or Councillor Blanksby? Favour. Uh, Councillor Brown? For. Councillor Cross? For. Councillor Harvey? For. Uh, Councillor McCartney? For. Councillor Oxley? For. Uh, Councillor Payne? You're on mute, uh, Councillor Payne, sorry. <laughs> Four. Sorry. No worries. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Rizal? Four. And Councillor Woodley? Four. Uh, that is unanimous, Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, on that basis, I want to move to item six on the agenda, which is the appeals report. Um, if I could hand over to Justin, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so we've had one appeal lodged, um, which I think Councillor said um, from his wife, which is um, uh, relates to a prior notification for um, conversion of an agricultural uh, building to uh, three dwelling houses. So that's that's just been submitted and is going through the process. Um, more importantly, in section three of the report, we've had um, a number of decisions. The first two relate to the Horse and Panniers, which is uh, 12A Church Street, North Luffenham. Uh, that appeal was dismissed. There were concerns there about the impact that the development had on the conservation area in the listed building and the um, residential amenity as well. Uh, the uh, inspector upheld those. The inspector, however, didn't upheld the concerns about highway safety. It felt that that was acceptable. Um, the other uh, final Sorry, one. Um, Justin, I've seen a hand raised there from Councillor Woodley. Yes, sorry, Justin. I'm slightly confused because I thought the notifications we received earlier today, um, appeals report, um, was referring to the dwellings for Louise Brown as a as a appeal allowed. It may it it, it may have been that. Um, the decision has come through. And I, uh, oh yeah, I think I think you might have missed um, might have missed an update there. It, 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 it's quite possible. Obviously, this report was produced um, yeah. uh, well about over a week ago now. Oh yeah, so yes. So, uh, Councillor Woodley, you've caught me on the hop, but it may well be then that we've had a decision hot off the press that that I've got, I've not seen as yet. No, okay. Justin, Councillor Woodley's correct. That was that was sent round to us earlier on today. Um, so, I've, I've got a raised hand as well from uh, Councillor Oxley, please. Yeah, I'm just interested as to why uh, we are not looking at that as a committee. We just looked at a uh, an application uh, from a, uh, a, a, a an officer. We had a, a, a an application from a uh, a councillor, um, which has been deferred. Um, but the Sorry, I'm going to stop you there, Councillor Oxley. Can you get to your question rather than refer to other things that have been talked about and postponed to other meetings? Is it the question about um, the, the? Well, if you hadn't interrupted me, Mr. Chairman, I will if I need to. Councillor I was Oxley. just about to Sorry. say. I was just Excellent about to point. ask. I was just about to ask why uh, it was looked at under delegated powers and not brought to this committee. That is my question because it's the wife of a sitting member. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, through you, Chairman. It, it's in line with the, the Council's constitution in terms of um, application member or officer applications that have to go to committee are ones that are recommended for approval or ones where um, uh, they've been called in by um, a, a, a member. So refusals can be delegated. Um, uh, the the one that was for uh, that's been deferred for tonight is for refusal, but it's one that I felt that there was um, such significant interest from the local community um, that it 
it was in the interests of openness and transparency that that one does come to committee. So that, that is why it, it is coming to committee and will come uh, next time. But this application, it is one that, um, like I say, the refusals can be dealt with under delegated numbers. It's also a prior notification. So we're on limited timeframes for determining such applications as well, where if we don't determine them within the timeframe, they're automatically approved. Thank you, Justin, that answers my question. Councillor Oxy, thank you. Uh, Councillor Harvey. Thank you, Chair. This does um, raise, following on from Councillor Oxley's point, um, and I appreciate um, Justin's reply, um, but it does raise a thing in the, um, the documents I've seen from the local government. Um, it, it does talk about um, this, it, it doesn't talk about decisions for for um, for councillors and also for officers, for those that would come to committee, but also for other applications that that fulfil criteria to come to committee. It talks about um, the. It doesn't talk about the coming to committee just for decision, just for when they've been recommended for approval. It, it says that they can't be looked at for delegated power. So um, it's it's kind of a, a massive point of order that I think possibly we we need to take away and and have a look at because there seems to be a, a, a great point and it it. it my, my point is that for others, and not just for officers and for councillors, but for those other people, um, they miss out on the opportunity to have their time in front of a committee um, and, and that valued time that they may have um, for their planning application. And actually, if we're only seeing 50% or we're only seeing the, the, the ones that are for approval, um, it kind of limits what the committee as well um so i just think it should maybe we need to have a have a look because it seems it seems at, at odds and it seems at odds at, at, with the papers i've seen thank uh, you councillor thank you so two things i'm going to ask um justin first of all to comment and then if necessary stephen as well thank you chairman i i, I think if if councillors have got a, an issue with what comes before them um then that's something that they'd need to take up with I think Phil Horsfield in, in, in his, his role um, as, as the council's um, uh, legal officer. Um, effectively, the constitution sets out what applications need to come to committee and those that don't. Um, in, in reality, um, I, I haven't recently done a check, but I think 94% of applications are dealt with under delegated procedures. If, if we brought every application to committee, um, we would need to have significantly more committee meetings. Um, so um, that, that, that is why, and it, it's, it's quite a justifiable means using the delegated process. But if members want to look at that, then I suggest that it would be to contact Phil Horsfield. And I'm looking around the room for any more raised hands. I can't see any. Um, no, I've got Councillor Oxley would like to come back, please. I think it's just a clarification of the fact that it's a, a wife of a sitting member. That is the that is the issue. It's not a question of coming to this committee because it's been refused or accepted. As my understanding is that every every uh, application that is uh, uh, put into this council by sitting members or serving officers in the, in the, in the interests of openness and transparency should come to this committee, irrespective of this refused or accept or that, accepted. That's okay, Councillor, thank you. And just just so that we can hear each other, or all of us can hear each what each other are saying. Um, Justin, did you want to respond to that? I, I was just going to say that 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 isn't what the constitution currently says. Um, uh, I think my I, I will double check it, but my understanding is that the constitution, and I've read it a few times now, um, says that it is where the application is for approval. That it has to go to to committee um, because in theory if it where there's a refusal the applicant has a right of appeal so committee thank you justin did you have anything else that you wanted to add to um what you were talking about before oh so the, the only the only other one i was going to mention is um 3.3 which was Buckland house which was for a hurdle fence um, where, again, the appeal was dismissed, the, the fence wasn't considered appropriate in that location. 
Uh, thank you. And it hasn't escaped me, um, Councillor Harvey and others, um, that some clarity for members would be appreciated um, in terms of how things are looked at in the future. Um, so this is obviously a recorded uh, meeting tonight. Um, so we'll ask governance to refer the question directly to our legal officer, Mr. Horsfield, um, and ask him to give us advice uh, in writing back to the whole committee, as opposed to directly to me, um, if that is OK with you all. Um, I'm looking now at item seven for any other urgent business. Some advice there are none, um, which concludes the business of the meeting. Uh, the next meeting will be a special planning and licensing committee on Tuesday, the 2nd of March, uh, 2021. Ladies, gentlemen and guests attending tonight, thank you very much. Kit, thank you. Have a good evening all.